Hi everyone, welcome to Draw with Jan channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw different types of fur. The first one is black and white fluffy fur. I'm using charcoal pencils for this. I'm showing you this one in detail and you can follow the same process to draw the remaining three spots. Now drawing the hair again using medium pencil. The reference picture shown above is the final version of my drawing. Follow the direction of the hair in the reference picture to the extent possible. At the same time, do not restrict your hand movement but try to keep it free flowing. It took me about an hour to complete each type of fur. However, I've created the video for about 5 minutes per fur to keep it short. To do this, I have increased the pace of the video and also removed certain portions where the process is the same. Once you get the basic structure of the hair right, start working on the details. I'm using dark charcoal pencil for the underlying layer beneath the hair. I'm now using an earbud to blend it and give it a smoother finish. This lightens up the shading a bit so I'm going over again with a dark charcoal pencil. Now you need to make this look as a layer underneath the hair. So focus on those white highlights that I'm leaving blank as I'm shading. I'm now defining more details for the hair. I'm using a dark shade here and I'm also using an earbud for blending as I'm shading. I'm just repeating the same process for the rest of the fur. I'm now using a 0.7mm lead to draw the finer details in the hair. Now you don't have to use the lead directly, please use it with a pencil. Using a netted rubber to create the highlights in the drawing. You can mold the netted rubber into any shape that you like and it helps you easily create the finer details in the drawing. For this drawing, I molded it into a sharp pointed edge because we need to draw those thin strands of hair. After defining the highlights, I'm going for another layer of shading with dark charcoal pencil. I'm going to alternate between dark charcoal pencil and the netted rubber for creating the highlights until I get to the desired level of detail. Now repeating the same process for the rest of the fur. Using a 0.7mm lead to add the finishing touches. This video is slightly blurred so the exact details are not quite visible.
However, using a thin lead would definitely help you add a lot more detail to the drawing and give it a realistic finish. The next type of fur is a dense coat of small strands of hair. I'm using orange first and I'm drawing small vertical lines following the pattern in the reference picture. You can create overlapping lines too. Since this is a dense coat of fur, draw as many lines as possible. Take the time to draw those details. Now switching to yellow for the next layer of shading. I'm again drawing small vertical lines and I'm trying to draw it surrounding the orange layer that we created before. Now using brown and repeating the same process of drawing small vertical strokes. This time I'm spreading it out a bit. I'm also trying to use this as the transition between the orange and the yellow shades. Now using red for the darker areas on the fur. Take your time to create these multiple layers, it'll make the fur look more dense and make it look more realistic. I'm using another shade of brown now as the intermediate color between red and orange to create the transition. shade of yellow to blend it all together. Now after adding all the layers of coloring, I'm using a solvent for blending. This helps produce a smoother finish to your drawing and it also helps you add the highlights very easily. Once the solvent dries up, you can use your color pencils again to add further details. As you can see in the reference picture, it looks like layers of hair. When one layer of hair falls over the other layer, there's sort of a shadow effect in the layer underneath. So use darker shades for those portions. You also need to draw the effect of hair falling over another layer. So some of your vertical strokes need to extend to the layer below. a shade of brown that is darker than the shades that I used previously to add the finishing touches in the drawing. Again, since the video is blurred, you are probably not seeing all the details very clearly. However, you can take a look at the reference picture to see the effect that it finally produces. type of fur that I'm going to show you is really long and thick fur. I'm using the indentation technique for this. Indenting involves creating grooves in your paper that subsequent shading skips over. 
I'm just using an empty pen with no ink for this purpose. However, there are various indenting tools available that you could use for this. Wherever you see the white lines in the reference picture are the areas where I'm creating an indent. As you can see, it's a curvy line and there are some areas where it is dense and some areas where it is spread out. So focus on those details and create your indent accordingly. for the first layer of shading. I'm going over the entire drawing with this shading and as you can see it skips over the indent that you've created before. Using a darker shade of grey for the next layer. Follow the direction of the fur and create those curvy lines. Using black for the next layer of shading. Try to create long visible lines and do not worry if you go over a previously indented area. The indented area will always remain white. There is also a bend in the fur that you notice in the reference picture. Following the direction of the fur in the reference picture and making sure to follow the dark shades, midtones and highlights in the reference picture will help you produce this effect. Also, try to make your lines look continuous, although there are some highlights in between. Take your own time to draw the details. It is quite simple. All it needs is investment of your time and patience. some finishing touches to the drawing. type of fur. This fur has long needle-like layers of hair. I'm using the same indentation technique for this. However, the strokes are slightly different for this. Instead of curvy lines, I'm drawing long thin lines with a pointed edge. I'm using yellow and light brown for the initial layer of shading. I will be using vertical strokes throughout this drawing. As you can see, even if you go over the indented area with your brown color, the white layer stays as is. 
I'm adding more and more layers here to create the dense effect. I'm following the same pattern of vertical strokes. Extending some of the hair into the indented area. Now going for the next layer with a darker shade of brown. I'm now going to mark the darkest areas with black. As you can see in the reference picture, there are two layers of black visible in the reference picture. There is also some black in between these two layers. Maintain the direction of the strokes throughout so that there is some continuity between these various layers. Using brown to create a smooth transition between the black and the white layers. Now switching to black for the dark layers of shading. From now on I will be using black and brown alternatively to draw those strands of hair. Follow the reference picture to observe the pattern and the direction of the fur and shade accordingly. Moving on to the final type of fur, there is a drawing of a cat that I posted in my channel recently where I've used the exact same technique. 
There is an underlying soft layer and there are tiny strands of hair visible on the top. As you can see, I am drawing really small vertical lines. I first used a dark shade of brown and now I am using a light shade of yellow. Now using brown as the intermediary shade between these two colors. Using black for the darker areas in the fur. As you can see, I'm not just drawing small vertical strokes, but I'm also creating patches of black as shown in the reference picture. Once I add all the layers, I'm going to use a solvent for blending. This helps create a smooth finish to the drawing. This technique is similar to the second fur type that I had shown in this video. After using a solvent, you will notice that any lines that you create using a white or a light shade of pencil are more clearly visible than it would have if you did not use a solvent. Similarly, any dark shades that you're going to use over a solvent are also going to look clear and nice. Once the solvent dries, I'm going to go in and add all the details. using a white pen to create further highlights. This step is optional and you can ignore it if you're happy with the highlights that you created using the white pencil. Hope you found this video useful. Please do share it and subscribe to my channel for more drawing videos. Thank you and see you again soon.